Oh man, you have no idea. I, uh, I'm pr- I mean, we might have talked about this. I'm very. Uh, I've gotten to the point where I'm. Do you know like OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder? That's I'm totally sick with that because yeah, I, I have like a very specific bag that I use that um, is the best that I've found that has the little compartments I need. And it's really tough um, traveling uh, as a band because you know we're carrying so much gear with us um, and we're trying to minimize it as best as we can because it's quite expensive you know, flying all over the place. The airlines, I feel like, really go out of their way to, to uh, screw you on the cost of baggage. But anyway, so I, uh, I've kind of boiled it down to the, the bare essentials. Like, um, so yeah, I pretty much, I geek out pretty hard on like, everything's gotta be like the super small, like travel size, maximum. It's like a, you know, like backpacking, you know, like uh, people that do long distance hikes. They say that like, you know, ounces uh, make a big difference, you know, although that's really small, like it adds up. And so, yeah, that's kind of how we are with all of our gear and all of our baggage and stuff. Yeah, I definitely remember coming in. Um, I believe we, we had to have flown into the same airport because I remember the, the route in and all the street art. Um, I'm like, we probably talked about this. I'm like really into to visual stuff, so um, yeah, yeah. I, I, I want to say it was like sort of a similar cloudy day the last time we were here as well. Um, but yeah, it feels like this huge metropolis, you know, like it's, everything seems really spread out, right? Besides just general things like the graffiti and street art and stuff, um, nothing really comes to mind. Um, again, yeah, we basically went straight from the airport to the venue and you know been in the, at the venue all afternoon so um haven't had a ton of time to really get out and see everything we actually have an off day tomorrow before we fly home and uh, i was really excited i had researched um a couple of the art museums here that i wanted to check out but i just figured out that all of them were closed on mondays which is kind of sucks but animation was kind of a big influence on how I put the music together. Um, so I was watching a lot of stuff online and there were a handful of artists um, that I was big fans of that I could draw connections with, um, just stylistic, aesthetic stuff that I felt like was similar to how I put my music together. So um, yeah, it, I reached the point actually where I would kind of use some of my favorite videos um, to, to play against some of my songs because I find that it's helpful for me to hear it more objectively when there's like some visual component to it. And so uh, I, I got really attached to that idea. And again, I felt like the music was put together in this very collage way that mirrored a lot of this animation that I was into. So. It, um, it felt like they really complemented each other. So um, I had no intentions of doing all the videos we ended up doing, but I'm glad we did because uh, it's kind of, I think, a real immersive experience and you can um, get a real vivid picture of, of how, what I'm seeing in my head when I'm putting it all together. You know? totally. Yeah, I mean, that was something that was really important for me uh, to express. Um, because a lot, my past couple records, um, I think fall a little bit more into a category of like being very sincere, kind of very real, um, maybe emotionally open or something. Um, and uh, I wanted to try something a bit different. I think like using the analogy of like film, I think this is the closest thing I've done to like a comedy, you know? Everything about it was meant to be very tongue in cheek and, um, I guess maybe the some parts, some songs in the album might not be that might not be super obvious, and so the visuals and the animation really helped to kind of deliver that message of like, yeah, this is really silly, and um, uh, it's meant to be tongue in cheek. I mostly listen to a lot of older music, and um, 
I, uh, but I still, um, I listen to a lot of, you know, more current stuff as well. And um, it's hard after, after doing this, I've been doing Watched Out for like eight or nine years now. And um, I think the biggest challenge is uh, continuing to grow. Number one, not doing, kind of falling into the trap of doing the same thing over and over. Um, but it's also really hard, like you don't want to start chasing trends or something like that. So again, that's something I kind of struggle with. Is I, I, want to, I want to incorporate some newer um, influences from whatever kind of younger artists and stuff like that. But, um, you know, I'm getting a bit older now and um, so I don't know if I get it the same way that they do, you know? Um, so I, at the end of the day, I, I, I just kind of um, try to make music that I want to hear, you know? And I think Mr. Mello is probably the best representation of that. It's got, it's quite diverse and it has a lot of different kind of influences in play, but, and all of them are like some of my favorite styles of music, you know? So where I would draw a connection to something like the Beastie Boys, um, kind of check your head era stuff. Um, and then there's more kind of like dance music stuff, maybe like Deep House records from the 2000s, something like that. Um, and then even some like psychedelic rock, maybe 60s or 70s, something like that. Um, I actually DJ quite a bit, and um, my DJ sets normally are all of that stuff kind of combined, and uh, that's the fun part is trying to draw connections between all of this diverse music, because um, I do think they all overlap in interesting ways. Might be really subtle, but um, but uh, yeah, that's that's really fun that's the fun part for me of DJing for sure well I would say maybe doing a bit of research about where you're going like I would you know obviously being here in Brazil like maybe cater it have some Brazilian music some bossa nova or um, yeah I think that's important and I mean I um, my philosophy on DJing is not um, I could care less about like the actual mixing. I think it's just about playing the right song for the right place and time. So uh, like this morning, um, we play in Rio, we played on top of Sugarloaf Mountain. It's right there, like, like right on the beach or whatever. And um, we were coming down right as the sun was coming up and there's a small little beach there. and. Um, so we walked down and just hung out for an hour as the sun was coming up and um, so we, we were actually talking about, you know, what would be like the vibe of music, you know. One of our guys in the crew works with this band Tycho. I don't know if you've ever heard of them, but we all agreed that would be, you know, very kind of like uh, almost ambient stuff. Obviously it's like super late at night slash early in the morning. That sort of thing, you know, just fitting the, the vibe.